First and foremost, I would like to say all praises to Yahweh, Boy Shem, Yahweh Shah, Rekar Kedash, double honors to the elders of GMS, who I learned this truth from. I would like to give a salutation to all the Akim out there that's preaching this word in righteous and sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. Also a shout them all to the Israelite foreigners out there, the speckled bird, who are going to come look like other nations, but who are Israelites. Shout them all, man. Today's lesson is going to be, the heavens shall shake exceedingly. Once again, today's lesson is going to be, the heavens shall shake exceedingly. And with that being said, let's take it to the scriptures, man. Okay? This is 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 6 to 10. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store. Reserved until fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So it's only been like a half a day since the Lord been crucified, man. All right? The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Here go the point. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. That's talking about those nuclear missiles, man. Intercontinental ballistic missiles, man. Okay? Let's continue on, man. Let's go to Isaiah. This is Isaiah chapter 34, verses 1 to 6. Come near ye nations to hear and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations and his fear upon all their armies. He have utterly destroyed them. He have delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood, and all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall roll together as a stroll. That's that mushroom cloud, man, that you see when you see an atomic bomb or a nuclear bomb detonate. That's that mushroom cloud, all right? And all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf all from the vine, as a fallen fig from the fig tree. For my sword shall bathe in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. So the Idumians are still here, man. All right? And upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fetters. And with the blood of lambs and goats, and with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord have a sacrifice in Basra, and a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. So, amen. <laughs> the Lord is coming to judge all nations. But number one on, on that list is you so called Idumians, you so called Edomites, man. You're number one on that list, man. All right. Well, let's continue on, man. Because nobody escapes, man. Let's stay in the book of Isaiah. This is Isaiah chapter 9, verse 5, man. All right? Because World War III will be a nuclear war. Isaiah 9 and 5. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garment rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Okay, so there you have it, man. All right, let's continue on. Let's stay in Isaiah 
This is Isaiah chapter 13, verse 5 and 6, man. All right? Isaiah chapter 13, verse 5 and 6. They come from a far country, from the ends of the earth. What is that talking about? Those nuclear missiles, man. Even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. Let's start there from the top. They come from a far country, from the ends of the heaven. Even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as destruction from the Almighty. And that's those intercontinental ballistic missiles, man. Hey man, those are the those are the those are the weapons of his indignation, man. Okay, let's continue on, man. All right, let's get second Andrews, man. This is second Andrews, chapter sixteen. I'm gonna start at verse thirteen. I'm gonna read down to sixteen. For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow, his arrows that he shoot as sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. So we know that's not talking about a regular arrow. Okay, that's talking about an intercontinental ballistic missile. Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consume the foundations of the earth. Like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer return not backwards, even so the plagues that shall be set upon the earth shall not return again. There you have it, man. All right? Well, let's continue on, man. All right? Those arrows is talking about nuclear missiles, man. Those are those arrows, man, that's going to be shot from one end of the earth to the other, man. All right? And America will be utterly destroyed, man. Okay? Let's get the book of Psalms, man. This is Psalms chapter 58, verse 6 to 8. Break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions, O Lord. Let them melt away as waters which run continually. When he bent up his bow to shoot his arrows, let them be as cut in pieces. As a snail which metal, let every one of them pass away, like the untimely birth of a woman, that they may not see the sun. There you have it, man. Because contrary to popular belief, man, all right, a lot of you, two-thirds of you Israelites and the rest of you heathens, a lot of you are born, okay, out of vain, man, okay? Because you're only born to get melted with these nuclear missiles, man. All right, let's continue on, though, man. This is 2 Edris chapter 9, verse 22, all right? Second Edges 9 and 22. All right. Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. Let my great be kept. Who's the great? Let's talk about the elect and my plan. For with great labor have I made it perfect, man. There you have it, man. All right. Let's read that again, man. Let the multitude perish then which was born in vain, okay? Majority of the people that's born on this earth is born in vain. They only born to eat a missile, man, all right? Let my great be kept and my plant, talking about the elect, for with great labor have I made it perfect. There you have it, man, okay? There you have it, all right? Because this is all the will of your high will shoot me out of shot, man. Okay? Let's go back to Isaiah, man. This is Isaiah chapter 24, verses 19 and 20. All right? 
The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. Okay. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it. It shall fall and not rise again. So you gotta ask yourself, man, what can make the what can make the earth reel back and forth like a drunkard? Intercontinental ballistic missiles, man. All right. Let's continue on, man. Let's stay in Isaiah. This is Isaiah 54 and 16. Okay. Isaiah 54 and 16. Behold, I have created the smell that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for its work. I have created the waster to destroy, man. That's it, man. Yahweh Shem Yahushua used the scientists to split the atom to bring forth this weapon to destroy. Plain and simple, man. Okay? Let's continue on, though. Let's continue on. Let's get Zephaniah, man. This is Zephaniah 1 and 18, man. Okay? Because, hey, man. Yahweh Shem is going to do his will. No? Okay, ain't nobody stopping that. This is Zephaniah 1 and 18. <clears throat> Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. For he shall make even a speedy radiance of all them that dwell in the land. So how is the Lord going to make a speedy radiance of all them that dwell in the land? By those nuclear missiles, man. All right? That's how. Okay? Let's continue on, no, man. Let's continue on. Let's get Jeremiah, man. This is Jeremiah chapter 50. And I'm going to start at verse 13. The 16th. Because of the wrath of the Lord, it shall not be inhabited, but it shall be highly docile. Everyone that goeth by Babylon shall be astonished and hiss at all her plagues. So we know that's not talking about ancient Babylon, because ancient Babylon is still functioning. And that's what? Iraq. That's talking about a new Babylon, which is America. America shall be destroyed with nuclear missiles and shall not be inhabited again, man. Okay? Put yourselves in array against Babylon round about. All ye that bend the bow, shoot at her, spare no arrows. Talking about those nuclear missiles. For she hath sinned against the Lord. Shout against her round about. She hath given her hand. Her foundations are fallen. Her walls are thrown down. For it is the vengeance of the Lord. Take vengeance upon her, as she hath done, do unto her. Cut off the sword from Babylon, and him that handeth the sickle in the time of, for harvest, for for fear of the oppression, swore they shall turn every one to his people, and they shall flee every one to his land. Man, that's it, man. Because these foreigners are going to get out of America, man. The smart ones, anyway. <laughs> Because America is going to be utterly destroyed by intercontinental ballistic missiles. Nevertheless, man, these nuclear missiles are going to shake the heavens exceedingly. Okay? Let's continue on, though, man. All right? Let's continue on. Let's stay in uh, Jeremiah chapter 50. I'm going to jump down to verse uh, 29. The 32. Call together the archers against Babylon. All ye been the boat, camp against it round about. Let none thereof escape. Recompense her according to her work, according to all that she have done, do unto her. For she have been proud against the Lord and the holy ones of Israel. That's right, the elect and Yahweh Shemiah Shah. 
Therefore shall her young men fall in the streets, and all her men of war shall be cut off in the day, said the Lord. Okay? Behold, I am against thee, O thou most proud, said the Lord God of hosts. For thy day is come, the time that I will visit thee, and the most proud shall stumble and fall, and none shall raise him up. And I will kindle a fire in his cities, and it shall devour all round about him. That's right, man. And that fire is those nuclear missiles, man. Let's stay in Jeremiah. This is uh, Jeremiah chapter 51, verses 1 to 3. Thus said the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon, against them that dwell in the midst of them, that raise up against me a destroying wind. What is that destroying wind? Intercontinental ballistic missile. <clears throat> and will send unto Babylon fanners that shall fan her and shall empty her land. For in that day of trouble, they shall be against her round right about, against him that bendeth, let the archer bend his bow, and against him that lifted himself up in the bridge gauge, and spare ye not her young men, destroy ye utterly all her hosts, man. That's those intercontinental ballistic missiles, man. All right? Let's jump down to verse 11. Make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord have raised up the spirit of the king of the Medes. Talking about you Russians. For his device is against Babylon to destroy it because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple, man. There you have it, man. Okay? America shall be destroyed. Let's go to 2 Joel, man. Salaki, Joel, the second chapter. All right? Because in those nuclear missiles, man, is going to be the vengeance of the Lord, man. And they shall not miss. All right? This is Joel chapter 2, all right? This is Joel chapter 2, and I'm going to start at verse 2. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds, and thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains a great people and a strong there have not been ever like thee neither shall be any more after it even to the years of many generations a fire devoured before them and behind them a flame burner the land is as the garden of Eden before them and Behind them a desolate wilderness, ye, and nothing shall escape them. There you have it, man. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as the horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of the chariots on the tops of the mountains, shall they leap like the noise of a flame of fire, devour the stubble, <clears throat> as a strong people sent in battle array before their face. The people shall be much pain, and all faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like the men of war, and they shall march everyone on his way, and they shall not break their ranks. There you have it, man. That's talking about those nuclear missiles, man. Those nuclear missiles not going to break their ranks. Salak, your family. That's right. Those nuclear missiles are not going to miss, man. They're not going to break their ranks. They're going to be in perfect formation, man. Okay? All right? I'm going to jump down to uh, verse 10. 
The earth shall quake before them. The heaven shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining from those nuclear missiles, man. Okay? That's when they call that a nuclear winter. <laughs> All right? And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executed his word. And for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide in it? That's right, man. Who can stand up in the day of the Lord? Who can abide in it, man? And the answer is nobody, man. Okay? Because if you are not of the elect, you shall be utterly destroyed, man. Okay? Let's go to Malachi. This is Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. All right? For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud ye and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, said the Lord of hosts. It shall leave them neither root nor branch, man. What type of day is that, man? It says the day shall come as the day of an oven, man. Okay? That's talking about those intercontinental ballistic missiles, man. Okay? This is in the Bible, man. Contrary to popular belief, man. Let's read that again. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. What type of day is that? Okay? And all the proud ye and all that do wickedly shall be stubborn, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, said the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. This is the day that's coming, man, upon the earth, man. This is why we telling you Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, similar Indians to repent and come back to your high with Shemiah Shah, man, before it's too late, man, okay? Because the doors of salvation are steadily closing, man. Okay, and before you know it, the doors gonna be sh the doors gonna be uh, shut all the way closed, man. Okay, and once the door is shut, they can't open it up, man. Just like the days of Noah in the ark, man. Once that once the, once Noah shut the ark, you think what I'm saying? It couldn't be opened up, and that was your how I was sure I was trying to shut the ark door. Okay, the ark door. All right, <clears throat> let's continue on, man. Let's continue on. Let's go to Zechariah. This is Zechariah chapter 14, verse 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume them away while they stand upon their feet. And their eyes shall consume them away in their holes. And their tongue shall consume them away in their mouth. There you have it, man. And if for those of you who remember Terminator, that's the scene you can ready to see out here, man. Okay, when Sarah O'Connor was holding that fence, man. That's what you can ready to witness out here, man. Okay? Let's continue on, man. Let's go back to Isaiah. This is Isaiah chapter 24. Verses 3 to 6. The land shall be utterly empty, utterly small, for the Lord has spoken this word. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world language and fadeth away. The halting people of the earth do language. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the audience, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore have the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are docile. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are born, are burnt, and few men left. Let's read that part again. Therefore have the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are docile. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, 
and few men left. So that's what's getting ready to happen, man. Okay? Because when those nuclear missiles get to, get to shoot off from the ends of the earth, from one end of the earth to the other, man, there's only going to be few men left on the earth, man. Okay? America's going to be utterly destroyed. Forget about it. Okay? Let's continue on, man. This is Revelations, man. This is Revelations chapter 6, verse 14. All right? And the heavens departed as a stroll when it is rolled together. Every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Talking about those nuclear missiles, man. Okay? Let's continue on in Revelation. This is Revelations chapter 9, verse 16 to 18. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. And I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and janum and brimstone and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouth issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three was the third part of man killed, by the fire, by the smoke, by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths, man. That's talking about those nuclear missiles, man. Okay? All right? Because when you look at a nuclear missile, man, those warheads are at the head of the missile, man. So when it say right here, and the number of the army horsemen were 2,000, 1,000, that's talking about those warheads, man. Okay? Hey, man, that's got over 200 million warheads, man. It's going to hit the earth, man. Oh, man. Not only is the earth going to go back and forth like a drunken, you're going to have tsunamis, volcanoes, everything, man. Hey, that's a dreadful day of the Lord, man. But hopefully, man, me and the rest of the hopeful elect, the brothers out here doing the work, we be delivered, man. Okay? Lord's will, man. Okay? Let's continue on, man. Let's stay in Revelation. This is Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. But the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the whoremongers, the sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That's talking about not hell. That's talking about those nuclear missiles, man, when they hit America, man, and throughout various other places of the earth, man, because America is the only place going to be destroyed, but America is not the only place that's going to get hit with nuclear missiles, man. Okay? All right? Because when America, because when this is all done, World War III, America shall be known as the Forbidden Zone, man. Okay? All right? Simple as that. All right? But let's continue on, man. Let's go to Isaiah, man. This is Isaiah. Chapter 42, verses 13 and 14. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. I have long time holding my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. This is how the Lord's coming back, man. This is the second coming of Yahweh Shah, man. Let's stay in Isaiah. This is Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15 to 16. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger and fury and his rebukes of flame of fire. For by the fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, 
and the slain of the Lord shall be many. There you have it, man. Salak, you feel me? Because the slain of the Lord shall be many, man. I mean, shall be many. Okay? Well, let's continue on, man. Because we are here giving our fair warning to our people. Let's get the book of Ezekiel, man. This is Ezekiel chapter 3. You know what? I'm going to start at verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the words in my mouth and give them warning for me. Okay, this is what we're doing out here every week. We're giving you so-called Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American, Indians, Syrian, Indians, warning, okay, from the Lord, man. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, thou shalt give us him not warning, nor speak to warn him from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but I will require, but, so like it, but his blood will I require at thy hand. So this is why we out here warning our people, man. Okay? Because, hey, if we don't warn, if we don't warn our people, your blood, the Lord is going to require, okay, at our hands, man. All right? We're going to be found guilty. If we don't warn you of these things, man. Okay? Because then your blood will be on our hands, man. But since we warned you, let's read verse 19. Yet if thou warn the wicked and turn not from his wicked wickedness, nor the wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. And that's the point. Okay? Let's stay in Ezekiel. Ezekiel. This is Ezekiel chapter 33. But once again, man, we want our people. <clears throat> so thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman to the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word in my mouth and warn them for me. Because we're telling you that all this calamity coming. We're telling you Jacob's troubles coming. We're telling you about martial law. We're telling you about these uh, concentration camps, these FEMA camps. We're telling you about these race wars. We're telling you about the karagma, about the chip. We're warning you of these things, man. Okay? We're telling you that a great famine is coming, of both of not hearing the word and a food famine. We're giving our fair warning, man. Okay? But let's continue on. This is Isaiah chapter 62. Verse 6, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord shall not keep silence. There you have it, man. We ain't keeping silence, man. Day or night, you can find this word going out on the internet. Okay? And let me get that. This is Psalms. Let's get that scripture, man. Okay? Because this word is steadily going out, man. Okay? This is Psalm chapter 19. And this is how this word is going out. Day and night. Okay? Around the clock. This is Psalm chapter 1. It's a lot. This is Psalm chapter 19, verse 1 to 6. The heavens declare the work of The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. Talking about the internet. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone through the, all the earth. And their words to the ends of the world, in them have he set tabernacles 
for the son, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoicing as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the ends of heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. There you have it, man. So there's no excuse, man. All right. Let's continue on, though, man. Let's go to the book of Daniel. So this is Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince will stand up for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. There you have it, man. This is the time, man. A time like never before. This is it, man. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah, man. This is Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 5 to 7. For thus said the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, not of peace. Ask ye now and see whether a man do, do travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman travail, and all faces turn into paleness. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved up out of it. Talking about the elect, man, okay? Because only the elect is going to make it up out of it, man, okay? Of the nation of Israel, that is. You heathens and, and you Edomites, you're going to be destroyed. Let's get Ezekiel. This is Ezekiel chapter 21, verse 9 to 14. Because we're giving you warning that a sword is being sharpened, man. A sword is being sharpened and it's about to come down, man. Okay? And this is all the left hand of the Lord, man. Okay? Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. Esau is the left hand of the Lord. Son of man, prophesy and say, thus said the Lord, say, sword, a sword is sharpened and also furbished. It is sharpened to make a sword slaughter. It is furbished that it may glitter. Should we then make mirth? It contemneth the rod of my son as every tree. And he hath given it to be furbished, it shall be handled. The sword is sharpened. It shall be furbished to give it into the hands of the slayer. Who's the hands of the slayer? Something about Esau, man. Cry and howl, son of man, for it shall be upon my people. It shall be upon all the princes of Israel. Turn by reason of the sword shall be upon my people. And smite upon thy thigh, because it is a trial. And what if the sword contemneth even the rod? It shall be no more, said the Lord God. Thou therefore, son of man, prophesy, and smite thy hands together, and let the sword be doubled the third time. The sword of the slain, it is the sword of the great man that are slain, which enter into privately chambers. There you have it, man. This is what's coming. Let's go to the book of Luke, man. This is Luke chapter 21, verse 25 to 28. And there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Man's hearts fell in them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken by those nuclear missiles. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your head, for your redemption draw near. Amen. We're close, man. 
Salvation is closer than we believe, man. Okay? Let's go to Matthew. This is Matthew chapter 24, verse 6 and 8. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom and kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilence and earthquake in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. We're here now. Salakia family. We are definitely here now. Okay. Let's go to second Edges, man. This is second Edges, chapter nine, verses one to five, man. Speaking on this time right here, man. Second Edges, chapter nine, verses one to five. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. When thou seest part of the sign pass, which I have told thee before, then shall thou understand that it is the very same time where when the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people of, in the world, then shall thou understand that the Most High spoke of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as all that is made in the world have the beginning and an end, and the end is manifested. We're here now. The end is being made manifested, man. Okay? The end is being made manifested, man, through your how about Shem Yahweh Shah, man. Because you're seeing all these signs, man. All throughout the four corners of the earth is uproars of the people. Pestilence. Okay? Earthquakes in diverse places, man. That's a check mark on all of them, man. Nation against nation. We're here now, man. Okay? We are definitely here now, man. All right? Let's go to Amos, man. This is Amos chapter 5. Verse 18 to 20, the day of the Lord, man. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness, not light. As if a man did flee from a lion, and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall, and a servant bid him. Let not the day of the Lord be darkened and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it. They, hey, there you have it. Let's read that part again. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark, no brightness in it, man? That's the day of the Lord, man. Okay? That's what's coming, man. All right? Because the Lord is stirring up the nations, man. And the Lord is stirring up the people, man. He's causing division in everybody's household. The Lord is doing this. Yahweh Boshim Yahweh man. This is uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 34 to 37. Think not that I come to send peace on earth. I come not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Put Yahweh above Shem Yahweh Shah first, man. I love him more than anything, man. Put him first, and you're going to be all right. Okay? Let's go to Joel, man. <clears throat> this is Joel chapter 3. Verses 9 to 12, man. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, 
Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your prune hooks into spears. Let the weak say I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen and gather yourselves together round about. There, cause thou mighty ones come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. And there will I, will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Hey, Amen. That's the battle of Armageddon. That's World War III, man. Okay? Let's get Proverbs, man. This is Proverbs 16 and 4. The Lord have made all things for himself, ye even the wicked for the day of evil. Did you hear that? The Lord have made all things for itself, ye even the wicked for the day of evil. So this is why Esau is on the scene, because Esau is the left hand of the Lord. Let's read that again, man. The Lord have made all things for himself, ye, even the wicked, for the day of evil. There you have it, man. All right? And I'm going end it off like this, man. This is, uh, I'm staying in Proverbs. This is Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1. The king's heart is in the hands of the Lord as the rivers of water. He turneth whatever so way he will. So, hey, man, the kings of the earth, their heart is in the hands of the Lord, man. He's controlling them, okay? They're doing his will, not their own, all right? And you know what? I'm going to read one more. This is Ecclesiastes, okay? Chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. One more time. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. There you have it. So with that being said, I hope this lesson was edifying. I hope those who come across it receive some type of edification. But until next time, all praises to Yahweh, Boy Shem, Yahweh Shah, Rakar Kadash. Shalom, family.